Welcome to Nerd Talk. My name is Pixie. I'm Sen. And I'm Pyrosin. And this week, we went to C2E2. Well, last week, technically. But hey. Well, on this week's episode. Right. Way to ruin my intro. It's <laughs> dead. Stealing your thunder and <sighs> punch throwing you. it out the window. So this C2E2 stands for Chicago Crazy Entertainment Error. No, it's, it's the wow. Chicago Comic and Entertainment Expo. Yep, this happened. Also, why is our little blip not up? Ah, oh, well. I was going to link to it on our Facebook page, and it's not there. Sad face. So yes, this ran from the from April thirteenth until the sorry April yeah thirteenth till the fifteenth in Chicago at the uh, McCormick Convention Center. And yeah, it was kind of spiffy. I, I guess we should preface this by saying that we did not go to the first day's um, festivities, that we could only make it up for Saturday for the most part. Uh, I got a little bit of time to go on Sunday, but most of what we'll be talking about are these Saturday events that we witnessed. Um, so yeah, do we want to talk about the show in general or go into our first major event? Um, let's see. Do, do we want to do a chronological thing? I suppose that'd be the best way to start. Okay, so we got there and we picked up our badges. And it was no lines. That, that, was, that was the pretty... easiest badge check-in I have ever I gone know, through. I know, right? It was, it was pretty great. <clears throat> Very organized and just, like, show up, get it, get gone. Yep, the bad... The, the, like, actual acquisition of the badges, like, registering, not so much. I was only notified that I'd been accepted three days before the con. <laughs> right. Um... We did, however, manage to get some tips from the person working the uh, registration booth, mm -hmm. which led us to some pretty fun events. Uh, the first of which being a panel headed by Anthony Del Cole on pitching and marketing your own uh, independent graphic novel. Yep. Which is kind of awesome. And was a pretty chill dude. <clears throat> Yeah, it was a, a mostly full panel with people as far away from uh, in, attending as far away from Canada and New York, and Florida. I think there was some people. And yeah, I think we had a Florida. Um, so yeah, basically the panel was regarding um, the process by which Kill Shakespeare, uh, Del Cole's indie comic. I'm gonna feel so bad if we're mispronouncing his name. By the way, I'm assuming we're getting it right. There, there aren't many ways to pronounce C O L. Yeah. Oh, he can he can correct us himself. I'm sure we'll get an angry email or something. <laughs> um, it was a it was a little bit daunting. I gotta say, dude's got hella connections. Right, like the part where it was yes. We um, we were admiring his business cards, <clears throat> which are printed on plastic. Um, the the way he casually explained, yeah, we raised three hundred thousand dollars. That's just a thing. Yeah, it's like, oh, I just sold shares of this comic for, like, $25,000 each. What? I don't know who the hell in my personal life would buy shares of a comic for that much. Like, he, he prefaced this with, yeah, I hold a degree in business, and, and so did his, his partner on this. So, like, it's not really surprising that they would have the connections to raise this kind of money. But I don't think that kind of advice applies to, like, the the college or post-college student that is just looking to, to print a story. Yeah, and then when it, when we were like, oh, well, these business cards of yours look really neat. Out of, like, nice bendy plastic. And he's like, yeah, I just happen to know a guy who runs a factory in China, and I bought him a beer, and he offered to print all these. I was like, whoa. It, it's just, it just kind of, like, knocks you on your ass. <laughs> I mean, crap, I think my best connection can get me, like, a free meal at a certain at certain restaurants in town. In a college town at that. Right. That, that's like the best my connections can do. I mean, I, I don't think I can get my mother to get me discount surgery if I need it, or, or my dad to get me a discount train part. <laughs> so it, it does occur to me when you're talking about cool business cards that I know how to uh, in, engrave little things in glass, the style of like the Daily Drop intro video. Where you I take a you take a Dremel tool and you just grind a little bit off the glass so there's the clear, smooth part and then a rough, sort of opaque part. And if, if he has fancy plastic business cards, I could totally make a business card out of a piece of glass 
That'd be that hardcore. doesn't sound safe to carry in your pocket. Whatever, like, how would you go around handing those out? I'd just break it over people's faces. Yeah, instead of making it, like, wallet size, just make it, like, a full sheet of glass that's, like, a foot long. And oh, then just, me, they'll, hi, they'll I work for Nerd Talk, and then smash it over their face. They'll remember that guy. And then maybe that... you give them a paper one, too, afterwards. Oh, even speaking, better, you can speaking have... Speaking of unnecessary rage, um, Del Cole has already declared a grudge against you, Pyro. Oh, how's that? Because <laughs> you didn't show up to the con. <laughs> oh, well. Because you weren't there when we showed him the business card. He's like, well, that guy's right off. <laughs> My bad, I guess. I, I believe right. he was being facetious. <laughs> yeah, no, he, he was totally playing around. The guy had an awesome sense of humor, and... I have a hard time understanding Canadian humor. I'm gonna I'm gonna come right out and say it's that it's just that dry, brutal sense of humor. It's almost like British comedy, but without the charming accent. Yeah, and so it's not like even cute. It just sounds like they're angry. Right. <laughs> no, I hate you and, and want you to die. And then there's like there's like this stereotype about them being so super polite, but it's like nope. This guy sounds like he's really angry. You pretty much just have to look at the loading ready run guys, and you realize that's not true. Except the loading ready red guys are really nice. All come off as super polite. Nice, but not polite. I'd say polite. I'm trying to find a picture. My really? impression of You're the gonna say that Alex is a polite guy? Stereotypical Canadian gestalt is that they come off as polite or serial killer. And nowhere <laughs> in between. Okay then. So I guess moving on. Um the panel itself focused on how to create the uh, presentation that you would be giving to a publisher about your graphic novel, specifically the pitch pack, he called it, which included sample artwork, um, the main pitch for your story, the synopsis document, and, and he went through this very well with a, a very nicely presented PowerPoint that showed off everything. Um, the, the fact that your document should be printed on uh, pages with watermarks for your comic... Uh, it, it was all extremely professional, and and I think, for the most part, all of the advice given was definitely solid, apart from the, yep, raise $300,000. That's great advice if you can follow it. I mean, right. well, I could not find any fault with that advice. If I could raise $300,000, what do I care about printing a comic? You'd just take the money and run to Costa Rica, and they'd right. never find you. I've got $300,000. That'll so, only set you up for like ten years. That's not forever money. That's just a right. long time money. That's just a that's just the entire foreseeable future money. Like I'm not even thinking I'll be alive in ten years. <laughs> if I am, that's wonderful, and I'm glad to be. But you really, I'm not planning for it. This actually works out great because the reason you're not going to be alive in ten years is because the people who invested in you are going to track you down and murder you. It, so, this works. It, it works out thing. twice. Exactly. Problem solved. Um, so yeah, he presented images of his uh, book, Kill Shakespeare, which, if you've never heard about it, check it out. It is a really awesome comic, and, and I highly recommend just the concept of, alright, we've got Shakespeare's greatest heroes trying to protect Shakespeare, who's a wizard, and we've got Shakespeare's greatest villains who are trying to kill Shakespeare, also still a wizard. Sounds I mean, like how it could cool be a tower that? defense game. Right. This is totally a workable plot. So the story follows Hamlet. I don't know, it's pretty sweet. I definitely look forward to reading it, and it probably would have bought copies of the books if we could actually have done something besides pay with cash. Uh, Mr. Fancy Businessman doesn't have a credit card reader in his pocket? Um, that would be because of Canada. Ah. Apparently Canada has problems with iPhones. Yep. Well, I, I have a horror story of... Like, there's people who go around campus at my university and try and weasel money out of you in by power of just being awkward and overbearing. And I, I got... There was a guy trying to sell me a copy of the Bhagavad Gita. And I was like, I don't want to buy a copy of the Bhagavad Gita. And he was like, no, no, it's fine. Just, just, just do it. And I was like, I don't have any cash on me. And he was like, it's okay, I have a credit card reader. And he did not pull out, like, an iPhone and a square reader. He pulled out, like, a, a countertop point-of-sale system. <laughs> a swiper? Yes. Oh, God. And I was like, 
Wow. That's... that's a, I hate you're you. You're doing that. <laughs> I'm, just gonna, I'm just gonna walk... Actually, what I did in that situation was I literally turned and ran. And then I got away. And I, some I people would like call that an overreaction, thing. but I, I, I got rid of the aggressive salesman, so I was happy with it. Okay, then. Like, actually running. Yes. Like, as in enhanced walking. Full sprint. <laughs> Pyro, I've never seen you move at anything but a leisurely pace, so this concept is foreign to me. I move pretty quickly when I want to. <laughs> Alright, then. Alright, so I guess we should continue with our uh, C2E2 experiences. So, after we went to the panel, we decided we were going to hit up the, the main floor. The exhibition hall. And... I was walking around taking pictures of cosplayers. I'm still working on that post. Please be patient with me. I'm trying to organize this collection of photographs in the most coherent way possible. <laughs> right. Um, so, yeah. Ab ab amidst all of the cosplay stuff, we actually managed to get some stuff done. We met some very cool people. Um, I got to meet the creators of one of my favorite web comics, uh, Romantically Apocalyptic. Yes. Got a picture taken with Z Captain. Hugs for the captain. Which I will be uploading to the site as well. Because why not? You still have to give them to me, but... We, we need more send pictures on the site, I think. It's true. It brings the fans. Y your milkshake brings all the boys to the yard. I, I could shake. <laughs> I, I don't think it would get us any web space that we want. In fact, I'm more worried that there would be 4chan memes coming up from that. By fans, uh, send doesn't mean audience members. He just means, like, ceiling fans. He means blades yep. attached to motors. For some reason, blades on motors just love the crap out of me. Huh? Anyway. Makes so sense to we, me. We went around looking at, at things. Uh, we, we were attracted to this one booth. The Sexually? Zombies Eat Republicans. Yeah, the Zombies Eat Republicans booth just interested me because of the name. And it, it's totally a... It looks like a really cool motion webcomic. So if you go to zombieseatrepublicans.com, you can check out the story. It's very interesting, and I guess there's, like, a app for the iPad. And... Yep. No, this this looks totally cool. I like the, that as like you that, as you sweep as through you the scroll, comic. it, like, yeah. moves. You watch that little zombie move. And... Yep. There's sound throughout the whole thing. It's a very cool production. I'm wondering where the angle of how they make money off of this is. I imagine you have to buy the rest of the story. It reminds me a bit of like those pop up books from when I was a kid, and that like you could like move slide tabs and like they slide. And stuff. Yeah, it's kind of like last night on Earth met a pop up book. It's very weird. They had internet babies. Very graphic. That is an old lady with her head ripped off. Yeah. Well. So, do the zombies only eat Republicans? Like, are we leaving other people alone? If you're like, whoa, zombie, I'm a Democrat, or I'm Green Party. Imagine Actually, the long-term ramifications of that would be that the world is exactly like it is in Left Behind. <laughs> it's just the same outcome, all the, really. All the Republicans are gone, and everyone else is like, hey, So yeah, that was party. interesting. Um, <clears throat> chatted with the folks from the AV Club, which is a branch of the Onion website. Right. Um, let's see. So, what I was looking to... before C2E2 started at their website for interesting people who might be at the con and interesting things to see, and their website advertised a whole bunch of stuff that was not at all interesting to me, including not mentioning that Jeff Jacks would be there. He was actually a very last-minute addition. He did not have his own booth. He tacked on with... What's his name? Something positive? Uh, Randy... Milholland. Randall Milholland. Yeah. Alright then. So he was just tacked onto that booth. But hey, it's and Jeff I, Jacks. I really did I like the fact that the... Showed up and was like, I'm picking up a super secret thing. Which we're still not going to talk about because it hasn't arrived at the recipient's uh, place. Yes. <clears throat> but it's been autographed. Sweet. Um, I, I did really love the fact that the webcomic artists had their own section of the show. Mm -hmm. So rather than just stick them in with the the actual dealers, 
you know, there there was a section you could go to if you wanted to see and promote your favorite webcomic. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> that was really great. Um, we got to talk to the guys from the Unshaven Comics and then see their stuff. Uh, three guys who were hanging out at a table. And, yeah, uh, they were premiering their new comic book, which I can't remember the title of. It's got something to do with ninjas and monkeys and space and Voltron-type things. I right. can't remember. But, like, talking to them, I I took interest in a comic that was sitting on their table called The March, which was specifically about um, the stories of immigrants who were peacefully protesting in the city of Chicago during the uh, the Immigrants' Rights March. And really, that book was kind of awesome looking. Like It was like kind of a historical fiction type thing, if I remember right. Right, or... yeah. It, it but it's a very recent stories. historical type of thing. Yeah, I, I mean, the, the, the show is full of people doing those weird, um, kitschy, just sci-fi reference stories. You know, the let's cram as many sci-fi memes into this thing as we can. But, like, this comic felt important. Like, th- this is the kind of thing that I really feel should be in schools, should be looked at by, by serious academics. So, yeah, I, I think that is, is more important than let's put a bunch of, of memes together and run with it because it'll sell. I, I was really, really interested in this story. So yeah, that that was a thing. Um, I also met. Uh, I'm trying to make sure I get this name right. Beldian Cipriani. Cyprian. I I don't know. We're probably butchering that Cyprian. name. Cyprian, um, who is the general manager for Devio Media, which is a Romanian company that specializes in custom comics and illustrations. So basically, you're a writer who desperately needs to get his comic made and doesn't know any artists who will work for you. You can contract this company, and they will run your ideas by their 12 artists to find a style that's appropriate for you, and work out a deal to produce it for you. Well, not produce it, but to illustrate it for you at an affordable price, and then at the end of it, you retain all the rights to your independent work. Sounds great. Yeah, they, they had a, uh, a guy at their booth who had produced a comic about a monster hunter and was trying to sell that. So that, that was actually a really cool booth. Um, they even do, like, 3D renderings and stuff. I'm at their website right now. Um, yeah, this is actually a really cool group. So, you know, outsourcing your comic art. Outsource your comic art. Too windy. Also, also uh, Romania. Uh, Romania, actually. I got a uh, a chance to play Fruit Ninja Connect at the Haichu booth because that's a thing. Haichu is actually pretty tasty. Yep, and I is, was suspicious at first, and is apparently on its way to be released in American stores. So I'll be able to get Haichu at places besides the Mitsua Marketplace. Mm-hmm. So it's it's coming to seven so eleven AM PMs and world markets. I don't think you won that TV though. <laughs> I did not win that TV. I just have an affinity for slicing bombs. Um, let's see. Uh we met some ocarinists. I don't I don't know how you would say that. Ocarinists, I imagine. I made the comment that that sounds better than a being a flautist and she corrected me. It's actually flutist. I didn't think that was right, but hey, that's kind of cool. Um, that were those were the people at STL Ocarina, and I guess they were offering to like teach you how to play. Yeah, I saw a couple of the them around the show. That they were selling right. Like I think the most enjoyment I got out of the con was just walking around the room and seeing the various things that people were enjoying uh what people are into these days like there was even a booth giving away free science fiction novels it was just like a few shelves and they're all like hey there's some free books and i I kept going what's the catch (laughs) right free is not possible nothing is free at least not things that are made of atoms maybe bits are free but atoms are not free no 
these books were sitting on the shelf and they were they just said like yeah you can have these take them enjoy, enjoy them give them away uh those were the people at the science fiction outreach project which can actually be reached on the web through their facebook page just search science fiction outreach project and yeah they're they're just people who want to get people reading science fiction that they would not be familiar with so they were giving away books to people in the hopes that they would read them i took one which one? I took two. It seems like Pixie wins there. <laughs> I time. took, if I remember correctly, I took the Nebula Awards 2009 book. Cool. And I grabbed a, like, best of science fiction anthology and one of the... I... <laughs> Are you hearing this? <laughs> I guess we'll wait for that siren. I live on a busy road. Anyway, so I grabbed a science fiction best of anthology from like 1984 or something. And uh, one of the Discworld books, uh, Terry Pratchett's Sorcery. Yep. Spelt with a U. So, kind of an awesome thing. So, that was kind of neat. I, mm -hmm. I did not quite understand, like, at first, but A. <laughs> it... It's a valid thing. They just want people reading science fiction. I can appreciate that. It seems like a great idea, but also, it seems like C2E2, you're probably mostly reaching an audience that is already pretty familiar with science fiction. Yeah, but you're just getting them to read more of it. Right. Also good. Yeah. Um, so I guess we can talk about the charity that we discovered while we were there. Well, I, I'd known about it previously, but uh, this was something that Pixie had just heard about. Um, As I walked past the Hero Initiative booth, which you can find at www.heroinitiative.org. And apparently it's a charity that helps um, former comic book creators who fall on hard financial times need like medical assistance or whatever, because you can't exactly retire with a pension in that industry. Yep, and remember, when Hollywood decides, yep, we're going to make a billion dollar movie about one of these comic book characters, the people who helped develop that idea and, and, and kept that character going for possibly decades at a time, yeah, they don't see any of that money. Because it's usually the company that produced it that gets all of that. Depends on the circumstances. Of course, the other right. side of that is that Alan Moore was offered money for V for Vendetta and the Watchmen movie. And he turned it down because he's a grumpy old bastard. Right. I, I, I can Hero sympathize with him to... not liking the them misappropriating his work, but I'm not sure that I would ever be in that situation where I don't like you, and therefore I'm not going to take free money from you. What kind of logic is that? Yeah, you keep your money. Uh, that'll show you. But, I mean, they've made contributions to artists like Gene Colan, who drew Iron Man, Daredevil, and Batman. Basically, like, helping these artists pay rent and manage their mortgages. Yep. People who've made things that we specifically love, part of the reason that we have these conventions, they sometimes need support because this isn't an industry that looks out for people in the long term. No, it is not. So it's really great that this kind of thing exists to help people. Sounds good to me. Yep. So yeah, uh, I guess continuing down the line... Um, no, C2E2 overall was a really awesome show. I got to meet a lot of cool artists and, and chat with them. A um, bunch of creators of various webcomics who... You know, discovered it, that Q101 isn't entirely dead in the Chicagoland area. Yeah, that, that, was... that seemed to be a crowning moment of the convention for you, just realizing that. There were dudes who saw that booth there mm -hmm. and broke down in tears. That is how in, in, integral that station is to this area. It's a local thing that has been on the air since, like, the early to mid-90s. And they their station recently got bought out by Merlin media or something like that um one of those things and their shows got taken off the air and so 
to hear that they're still going online and that they're pl they have active plans to try and get back on terrestrial radio. That was huge. Yep. So, best of luck to those guys. Definitely worthwhile. It, it's good. That was the only good music in the area. I'm sorry, but like B96 and those other stations, they just play like trashy pop songs and the same songs five times in an hour, and it's terrible. Yeah, I'll, I'll admit, I don't listen to a ton of radio, but uh, Q101 was always something I did go for. All right. Um, but, yeah, so there was that. Um, let's see, what else did we do? Oh, right, can't forget this. Uh, we also got... There are perks to being pressed. We got a free copy of issue one of Against the Green by Erica Austin. So, um... Which apparently sells for 20 bucks, so holy crap. Yep. It's a nice color-bound trade paperback. Um, the story follows a young girl named Leslie, who is, you know, be between that line of what is male appropriate and what is female appropriate for her age you know the the book starts with an argument between her parents of well what kind of things do we buy for our soon to be born daughter and apparently the decision is that you know comic books are cool action figures are cool skateboards are cool star wars is definitely cool so she ended up leaning um leaning by toward... the age of 9 towards yeah the the male assumed stuff yeah and as a result she has quite a healthy imagination she uh, imagines herself in in different fantasy situations which are a way to cope with the i don't know overall frighteningness of growing up mm. I, I imagine developing into a teenage girl would be quite a terrifying thing can't say i've had the experience personally <laughs> But yeah, some of her hallucinations are just awesome, and others are, like, downright Freudian creepy. Like, the the ninja firing or uh, firing booby grenades at her is a little bit terrifying, but overall, it's, a, it's an amazing comic book. I think it's really well written. The fact that there's a booby bazooka in here is reason enough to go check this out. Yeah, it, it's a really great comic. I think the creators are on to something with this. I'm, I will be looking forward to issue two when it comes out. Uh, the art style is this nice blend between western and anime style. There's definitely some um, Asian influence, I'd say. Like, the well, yeah, large eyes. Large eyes, the wave lines for action. Hmm. But, tentacles. <laughs> so many tentacles. Not that kind. Yeah, overall, I, th I think it's a really great story. I think the creators are onto something here, and, and I highly recommend this. I think this is a fantastic book. You know, I, I can happily say that they seemed to have sold out of this at the show. I don't think they gave away all the copies. I think they did sell some, but on the last day, I, I did see that their booth was uh, pretty much empty. Let's see. Paperback is available for purchase on Amazon.com for five ninety five. Digital version is available on Kindle. Yeah, I I really like this comic. I'm looking forward to the second one coming out. So yeah, if if you have not uh, heard of this or if you're at all interested, their website is slightlyoffproductions.com, or you can check out their Amazon.com and just search for Against the Grain. Part two will be coming out in, in August, August 2012. This year. And there's another short story spin-off thing coming out the following month after that in September. Sweet. So yeah, check it out if you haven't seen it. Uh, it's definitely worth your time. So Your time is so valuable. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to lie here. The reason I was 20 minutes late for my class this morning, that book. You were sitting there reading it? I was sitting in my car reading that book. Nice. <laughs> I read mine on the drive back from Chicago when I wasn't behind the wheel. Uh, Sen just read it while driving. Also, he drives a tank, so he killed like 100 people on the way back, but they were unhurt, so it's fine.
against the grain, responsible for about 100 deaths. Uh, it's, uh, it's against the grain in the sense that what? he was driving a tank on the oncoming traffic lane on the highway, so it's what against the grain of traffic. What can you get? That's like a back of book thing. Right there. <laughs> responsible Some guy... for 100 deaths. Some asshole on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> so it's... Somebody who read this while driving a tank is enough, really. <laughs> More interesting than driving a tank. There's there's your back of book we right need to there. Get them you on have the, my permission. We need to get them on the podcast just so we can tell them that joke happened. I'm sure they're listening. We have thousands of listeners, right? Sure. Um, Delusions. So Fez came out this Friday? Last Friday? Yep, and a lot of fans... Well, former fans aren't interested because, well, let's let's just say the lead developer is not what you'd call the most humble of individuals. Well, but say what you will about him, Fez is receiving fantastic reviews because, let's face it, it's pretty unique in concept. The thing it is, is not the thing it seemed to be before it came out. Everything I've heard about it is that while it looked like a platformer before it came out, the platforming and puzzling based on rotating the perspective is not actually the main gameplay mechanism of this game. It is right. like an old school puzzle game that to beat properly, you are going to be need you're going to need to take pen and paper notes while you're playing it to figure right. out what the heck is happening in the world. Yeah, I I know that um Sparkly Kiss uh mentioned like i've got all these keys and i don't know where the locks for them are nice. it is also and a game that you want need to beat multiple times to understand and that that gives away immediately that it's not just a platformer because you don't need to play a platformer on new game plus but like the vast majority of the content is inaccessible in your first playthrough of the game all right then so We'll be doing a review of that in the near future. We'll get right on that. Yeah. So is allegedly it's having like bug issues right now. Yeah, there there are some game breaking bugs in there at the moment, but they are being worked on by both the Fez team and by the Xbox team. Uh, particularly public service announcement: there is mi there's a lot more frame rate and crashing issues if you have a USB stick in your Xbox. So if you're playing Fez and you're getting terrible frame rates and crashes, then take, take the USB, USB stick, stick out stick of your out. Xbox. All right then. So. Is, like, Christmas in three weeks and nobody told me? Because a whole crap load of stuff came out this week. Yeah, I've actually got a game coming out May 1st that I'm now incredibly interested in. So, I'll, I'll let you start, Pyro, since you, you jumped this topic. Okay, since the previous show, Trials Evolution has come out. Skullgirls yep. has come out. Super yep. Monday Night Combat has come out. Yup. And Microsoft has launched its Arcade Next initiative, which will, over the course of the next week, release Minecraft for the Xbox, among other XBLA games. Which I don't remember off the top of my head. Let's see. But, a whole lot of stuff. Super Monday Night Combat is... Oh yeah, Legend of Grimrock also came out. Yep, so much stuff. Super Monday Night Combat is probably one we're going to review when we get the chance. This It's mm -hmm. League of Legends if League of Legends was a first-person shooter. And I, I while I do not have the time to play this game or the internet bandwidth to download it because my internet connection is real slow, I, I want to desert. get on this game real quick before other people get good at it because I figure getting in with the newbie Whoops. flood right after it's released is the best way for a noob like me to play that game. Yeah, once, uh, yeah, the, 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 once you fall behind on the learning curve, that's it. You're never going to be able to play. I, I think there's fairly significant matchmaking, but as the game gets older, people who are bad at it are less and less common, and so you're more likely to get matched against hardcore players. So I, I'd like to get some experience with that before it gets too old. We will definitely talk about that on one show or another. Yeah, so this is why I'm really happy, one, that um, 
I'm, I'm sorry to derail this, but uh, that Mass Effect One, Mass Effect Three's multiplayer is cooperative and not competitive based. Yeah, really appreciative of that. Two, I happen to be at least decently good at it. So, <laughs> so this is like, oh my gosh, I could actually play a game online and not get yelled at. It's pretty brilliant. No, I still get yelled at. I'm sorry, Silver Mode is just full of douchebags. We'll do nothing but scream into their microphone if you do not come res them. Anyway. They're stupid vanguard asses. You need to just play with me. <laughs> they're stupid vanguard asses. We're like, I'm going to charge this group of four people and a brute. Ah! Oh, BT Dub's uh, Legacy 1.2 patch also came out. Yay! In Star Wars The Old Republic, so that's kind of important. Um, the, I did want to talk about something on Star Wars while we're at it. Y'all? Yeah. I, I have to say, um, Bioware and EA... I don't know if this is going to work. Holy crap. Like, this is the first time I think an MMO has ever given away just free months. Mm -hmm. It's like, have a free month of time on us for playing. Every single person who has hit the level cap. Uh, Not even. All you need to do is get to legacy uh, level 6. You don't even have to be level 50 anymore. They, they did listen to the response of people who are like, well, what the hell? I've got, like, three level 30s. I'm still not a valued customer? That that That's terrible. Okay. EA and Bioware listened to your complaints. And we're like, fine, get to legacy level 6 and you're good. Mm-hmm. Well, that's interesting because I have a level 50 character on the Old Republic and I did not receive an email offering me a free month. You, you I, haven't received the email yet? I received because... an email on Monday saying, hey, you can play for free until this Friday. You yes, get a free because, five days. Because you have an inactive account right now, you did not receive the free month. But if you renew your account before the 22nd, they will give you the free month. Uh, that seems like a funny tact for them to take, because if... You renew one month and you get an extra month. If I was offered a full month, that would make it worth my while to, you know, download the client and see if they've fixed my main character's class quest that was incompletable before. As it is... Sure, though, you never messaged them about needing to fix your main character. I did. I filed a bug report. Attached oh. to the thread of bug reports that was also about the same topic. Yes, but did you send them an in-game message through their help system? Yes. Okay. Including then the reference that, numbers. Then of there's that no thread. excuse for that, and they they need to have that fixed. But right now, you do have a week to figure out if that happened. Well, at this point, I have two days, and I need to yeah. download the client. And which for you is going to be rough. Getting being an adult. I have things to do on Thursday and Friday. If they Ah. gave me until Sunday, maybe this would be more feasible for me to check this out. But they said, look, Monday till Friday, no weekends. That's that's for whatever. It's fine. I do think they started it last weekend. I got the... Nope, it was on Monday. I have the email right here. All right, then. I should see what my email says, because I don't... Yeah, as far as the free month goes to current subscribers, um, you'll basically get an email the next time your account should be re-upping. The the other funny thing about this is that Gabriel from Penny Arcade tweeted that between the Mass Effect 3 ending and the, the Old Republic free month, a Bioware fan should just start asking for ponies. It seems about right. <laughs> Yeah, um, I, I have a feeling that the issue with that is that, you know, Old Republic isn't known for having a ton of high-end content. Like, they're, they're working on it slowly. They added a new Battleground, they added a new Flashpoint, they added a new um, Raid. That's fine. Yeah, but as I think re- you gift, we are giving all active subscribers... Uh, of their very own Tauntaun. Let's see... In real life. <laughs> a baby tauntaun. A tauntaun, if you will. That's the other thing about demanding can ponies slice, from can Bioware. Can I slice is it open and use it as a pillow? Once you actually get a pony from them, what the hell are you going to do with a pony? All they do is eat and crap. That's not... Ponies are not that great. 
But you can let children ride them if you've got if you're into that kind of thing. So yeah, that that's what Bioware's working on. Um, I gotta say, I do Let's like see. the legacy patch. I, I think the things that they're adding are pretty. Just be awesome. sure you are an active subscriber and have a level fifty character. By April twelfth. By April twelfth or, or April twenty second. Yep. Uh, or be sure you are an active subscriber with a legacy level six account. By April twenty second. Unlock your legacy by finishing chapter one. Continue your legacy progression on multiple characters until you see level six on your legacy level bar. Yep, they they give you a bunch um, of different examples of possible ways to get your legacy to level six. Uh, and then if you qualify, you get thirty days of game time. Yep, they'll just send it to you the next time your account would be billed. But so you would need to be an active subscriber for that. Yep. So you it would it's kind of like a buy one get one. Well, yeah, they're they're just not going to charge you the next mm -hmm. time. It's it's basically the next time your card would be charged, it's going to go. No, here's a free month. So I will provide the link for that post. Yup. Right here. Um. Yeah, I I really like the legacy system. I like that it's encouraging me to have alts and to play them. Um, so, for instance, the, the biggest way that Legacy has affected my characters so far is that because I have a maxed out Sith Warrior that has finished his story, um, whenever I cast my self buff on one of my Empire characters, the Sith Warrior's buff also gets applied. Likewise, uh, when Pixie casts it on one of her characters, her Sith Inquisitor's buff is going to get applied to that character as well. If you, if I'm playing on my Republic characters and I do that, does I not get, work on the Republic characters. I get the Jedi Consular's buff instead. Oh, really? So yes. it does apply across. Yes, it just doesn't like have a cross faction thing. It it'll switch the faction. Okay. Off. All right then. So that's actually been patched in since I checked it. Sweet. So yay, reasons to play the other faction. I thought they were just like, no, you stay with your faction. Don't no. switch. No, that's it. It works. Great, I'm gonna go level my Jedi Knight. Bye! Additional investigation what level has is revealed your Jedi? <laughs> that this email they sent on Monday told me that I could have played the previous weekend, but they only sent me this email on Monday. So, yeah, the, the free return weekend that was two weeks ago? No, this is the previous weekend through this Friday is free to play for everybody. And they told me this on this Monday. And I would have been able to get around to it if they had told me on a weekend, but if they only give me the weekdays to do it, I can't. Which they gotcha. did. Gotcha. Alright then. So yeah, um, I guess moving off of the Star Wars thing and on to the League of Legends. We finally received a new patch! It's only a week late. Which had... Fans freaking out on the forums for a solid week. Always funny. So, does this like, patch include native replays? No, unfortunately, the one feature that most people really want in the game still hasn't been done. It's I, madness I know, that Star there are no Starcraft native replays. Has in. this down, but I can't imagine it'd be that hard. Can, can I interrupt with a very only slightly off-topic thing? Sure. So League of Legends has a banner at the top of their page that says that they're hiring at yep. Riot. And I'm poking around at this because I'm hunting for internships at the moment. Yep. There is a volunteer program manager position open and da da da. Seems like a standard job listing. Uh, can it, except for this sentence right here. This candidate should also have an excellent writing and verbal communication skills, strong worth it, have an extremely positive attitude, and be open to the idea that pie is superior to cake. Well, thank you, Riot, for I am disqualified. Sense of humor. Yep, I'm gone. Actually, I, I like cake. pie, but still, I, I'm a, I'm a I, cake fan, so I would not apply for this the on the moral grounds that it's discrimination against cake people. I mean, oddly enough, none of the other jobs open to list the idea. That. Yeah, none of the other. Um, it's just job specifically that one. The content producer must like pie. No, volunteer program manager. Okay, the program manager must like pie. Volunteer program manager. What is the difference? Volunteers they don't get volunteer paid. Volunteer stuff. <laughs> no, they've arranged volunteer-related things. 
manage them, if you will. Okay. Assist so, the lead community manager in building multiple well-organized volunteer programs for League of Legends. So, for instance, this would be like... I guess if they were going to do a charity thing. Or people who are running the booths at shows. I'm not sure what... Oh, I got linked to a StarCraft-related thing. He's linking to the fact that you can watch his replays. Well, I'm linking the fact that you cannot watch my replays, but go to this page and realize how close they came to having a beautiful web relay replays portal and then didn't take the last little step of letting you click on one of those matches and download the replay. Yep. And then you go to BungieNet. <laughs> and they're like, hey, come watch our games. Well, they, they've just got... Yeah, they've got the statistics for everything. For, like, yeah. so much ridiculousness. Still, though, with the League of Legends, they do live streaming of all the main games, and you can find them online afterwards. Yeah, but that's not, that's sort of not Riot. That's third-party people working really hard to circumvent the limitations Riot has left in the game. No, a lot of the streaming actually is Riot, because they host it, they provide the commentators... A lot of that is Riot doing the work. But even then, they're using the third-party LOL replays software in the vast majority of the cases because right. spectator mode introduces a ton of lag into matches. And so, it, if there's serious competition going that, on, they use LOL replays. Yeah, it is a shame that I can't go back and watch my replays to try to figure out, you know, what could I do better? What worked, what didn't work? Riot should hire those people and integrate that software that is already written and into their game and support it. Which, it's right. weird that being written by third-party people means it was much harder for those people to write it than it would have been for Riot to do it with source code access to their game. Well, Riot was busy breaking the UI of their game, so... Yeah, I guess. Er errors anyway. such as... Enemy team is unable to surrender. Nothing anywhere can be damaged. <laughs> so you just have a pool of minions that aren't dying and can't be killed. Perfect. I'll take it. I'll play right. that game. All of this just for bouncing damage text. I think that's a worthwhile trade. Also, the uh, the like headlines when you kill someone are now freaking huge. Like You get a first kill and it takes up like a quarter of your screen. Are they as big as Bowser? It's like, first blood! And you probably also got second blood because you can no longer see your character. Alright, so if replays aren't in this patch, what the hell good is it? Okay, so as I said, we have had updates to the game's UI, some of which are really cool, some of which are just kind of... meh? I, I didn't think we needed that. Um, the actual borders on the edge of the screen itself have been changed, so... Yay, I guess. Um, champion XP and gold rewards have been modified. So, for instance, if your team's really behind and you happen to have a really awesome team fight where you get an ace on the enemy team, chances are you just brought yourself back into the game. Um, specifically, champions who kill champs who are above their level get a lot more experience, and champs who kill people who are under level get a lot less experience. Same goes for gold. I think this is an amazing change, personally. Um, the maximum bounty for killing a champion who's on a kill streak, ambulance, has also someone been else is increased. on a kill streak. Right, somewhere. Um, the HP and mana regen rates on characters will now display on the <coughs> HP and mana bar, so you can actually tell how fast you're going to regenerate. Uh, let's see. Other things. Floating text has been added for uh, different abilities that will stay above your character. So, like, for instance, if you get stunned, you'll see the words above your character. Same with silence. Same with snare. You will be able to see that above you. Um, the damage is also now synced with colors. So physical damage will appear on your character as red, magical damage will appear as purple, and true damage will appear as white. Likewise, the death recap screen that 
you have the option of viewing upon your death will also be coded to these colors. The announcement system is now really, really obvious, as I said. Um, so they, it, it's just there to kind of encourage you more. So multi-kills, first bloods, all that just looks more spectacular. Uh, there's been two more, more bots added to the game. The Scion bot and the Vladimir bot. Because we really wanted to have to deal with Vlad. Playing or bot Scion, for that matter. <laughs> right. Yay, yay. Um, so, Byro, how annoying is it when you think you're going to be playing a bot match to get your first uh, win of the day bonus, and then you realize that you were, like, off by 15 minutes? That's probably pretty annoying. I don't think I've ever done that, but... Well, now you can actually check how long it is until your next first win of the day bonus. Wow, what a basic feature. On your feature. summoner profile page. What an incredibly primitive, obvious feature that it only took them this long to add. Yep. Um, so that, that has been added to the game, and I think that's a fantastic addition. Needed to be done. Uh, mastery pages are now stored server-side. So if you happen to play League of Legends on multiple computers, you don't have to keep different versions of your mastery pages saved. But as a result of this, everyone has had their mastery pages cleared, and you need to redo them so that they can be stored server-side. Ta-da. So if a match comes up and it says, play now or finish what I'm doing, and you accidentally click finish what I'm doing, is there any way to actually enter the match except for waiting now? I'm not sure. I've never clicked that button. Uh, the, the old way of it was that you would just be stuck waiting for your queue to time out, and then eventually it would drag you into the match, which All right, is really dumb, but existed. I'll have to check that. Um, also, we've had a new champion added, who I spent some time playing today. Hecarim, the Shadow of War. He's a centaur. An undead Ghost Rider-ish centaur. So hey, we called it! Yup. Um, basically, the way I look at him is he's the offensive version of Sejuani, in that he can just chase you down all day long. But whereas Sejuani will just, like, slow you and piss you off, Hecram will kill you. Hecram will just keep beating you until you're finally dead. Um, the coolest thing about the guy is by far his uh, ult, which is called Onslaught of Shadows. Basically, it's a charge forward that has decent range, maybe a quarter of a lane. And he will stop at the point that you designate and create a shockwave. When he creates the shockwave, anything in it will take additional magic damage and be feared. Basically, it's the ultimate engage in the game. Like, you can do this through walls. That, that was the point where you went from a kind of scary jungler to just completely psychotic, oh my god, how do you survive this jungler? Uh, he's got a move that increases his speed called Devastating Charge, where he slowly increases his movement speed over time. Like, at my full build with him, that gave him 700 movement speed for about half a second. Uh, the, the total duration of the ability is 4 seconds, and he's constantly speeding up during it. Then, if he slams into a target during this, the target will take additional damage based on how far he's traveled, peaking at a point. Uh, he has a really nice AoE regen called Shadows of Dread, which is great when you're chasing someone and happen to run through a line of minions because he doesn't suffer unit detection. I guess he just steps over minions. Um... Hecarim gains health equal to a percentage of the damage that the enemies in the AoE ring suffer. So it's like a little just four or five second ring that appears around him with a decent range. And anything that's standing near you is just progressively taking damage and you're regaining health. It's extremely useful for if you're going to start fights with your opponent while standing in like 20 of their minions because you're pretty much guaranteed not to die. Because the whole time you're bashing them, you're just going to regenerate health. And then, you know, the, the common problem with doing that is, yeah, I killed the enemy, but now I'm going to die from 20 minions just pinging me. If you have Spirit of Dread up, you shouldn't get killed by minions. And finally, his Q, his most basic ability. It's called Rampage, 
which is really fun when the game shouts that you are on a rampage. It's like, yeah, I know, I did that. Um, he just cleaves a, a big circle around him with his scythe. The cool thing about this ability is that th if you spam this move, the cooldown on it actually gets reduced over time. So essentially, after like four stacks of that, it's like, yep, one second, one second, one second, and he'll just be spinning his blade around himself. Um, the unique thing about his passive, in addition to ignoring unit collision like Fizz, his basic attacks also gain attack damage equal to a percentage of his base movement speed. So if you build this guy to just be super fast, you're also adding to how much damage you'll do. Which is kind of awesome. And finally, on the patch notes, we have the list of buffs and nerfs for the week, so let's go over them quickly, shall we? Sure. Here's the lightning round. All right, Annie, buff. Uh, mainly her passive Pyromania has been reduced to only needing four stacks instead of five to gain the stun. Akali, huge buff. Uh, base armor and health increased and fixed bugs that caused her to not get assist properly. Gragas. Um, had his recommended items updated the way most champs need to. Graves, bug fix. Aurelia, bug fix. Jax, um, buff. His passive will now stack even if his attacks are dodged or miss. Uh, Karma, people remembered her. Fixed a bug. Kale, giant buff to Divine Blessing. It now is actually functional. Kogma, no longer regenerates health during his passive death animation. Derp. That's a thing. Jaina. Um, buff to her ult and uh, definitely a buff to her most basic ability, her Q, the Howling Gale Tornado. Um, Leona. Not really a buff, just kind of fixes. Like, her animation hitbox got fixed for her Zenith Blade. Um, Sunlight now has a new particle, so it doesn't look like Lux's ability. And they fixed one of my favorite bugs in the game. The bug where if you hit Kogma with your stun ability and kill him, you would actually get a double kill. Kogma would die twice in a row, and Leona would get like 600 gold and do a happy dance. They finally fixed that. Okay, then. That was a thing. Um, Lulu, just... You know, fixed a couple bugs. She's still the same character. Still the same amazing supportal. Uh, Lux, bug fix. Malphite, bug fix. Misfortune, bug fix. Malkaiser, Mal uh, sorry, Mordekaiser, bug fix. <laughs> Oriana, buff. Uh, the cost of her Q has been reduced. Yay. Sujuani, buff. Cost of all of her abilities have been reduced because, frankly, Sujuani is bad. Uh, Swain, buff. Basic attack speed increased and Ravenous Flock has been reduced. Yay. Teemo, huge buff, just like amazing buff for Teemo. His toxic shot will now actually work properly, which is kind of a bug fix, but kind of terrifying in the long run. And his move quick cooldown has been reduced, so thankfully the thing isn't more powerful like everyone was fearing, it's just more available. Which, if you've caught Teemo, he's already dead, so it doesn't matter. Uh, Tristana, buff. Vladimir, bug fix. Yorick, bug fix. Ziggs, bug fix. Zillion, buff. They reduce the cost of two of his abilities. And finally, the items. Atma's Impaler, buff, uh, nerfed. Dorn's Blade, nerfed. Dorn's Ring, nerfed. Hex Drinker, buffed. Wit's End, totally buffed. What happened to Atma's Impaler? They reduced the conversion rate of health to damage from 2 to 1.5. Damn not, it. Not really okay. a huge... I, I ran one today on Hecarim every game I played with them. I didn't notice And it's difference. not really a huge yeah. knock on uh, the Doran's items either. Yeah. It's a 20 point difference. The Doran's items lost 20 health just to make the Doran's shield more worth taking. Because mm. if you just want the health, take a Doran's shield then. They're, they're still really good items for what you're paying for. Alright. So yeah, that's League of Legends. I've got one more thing I want to talk about before we go this evening, and that is the game that I'm looking forward to May 1st this year. That would be Terra. Never heard of it. Well, go ahead and search T-E-R-A on, uh, on your Why own. would I do that? I'm already listening to a gaming news podcast. My podcast should just tell me about it. 
Okay, so your podcast will tell you about it then. Yeah, you're gonna delete that section, I'm guessing, or is that staying in to punish me? Probably punish staying you. in to make you look like Makes an asshole. Make Seth look like a moron. Derp. <laughs> This is your job, dude. So tell us about Terra. <laughs> okay, so Terra is an MMO being created by On Mass Entertainment. It's based on a Korean MMO of the same name. Um, and what we have based here, on or actually is? I think it actually is this. This is just the domestic release of it. Our domestic, not theirs. Derp. So what we've got is an action-oriented MMO. Um, I'm gonna first make sure my computer's muted because that seems to be a problem that keeps reoccurring on this show. Um, it is a an action fantasy MMO uh, in which you actually control your characters more than just, yeah, I walk up to the enemy and then we auto-attack and I use a couple little abilities. Like, no, tanks in this game actually need to dodge the enemy's attacks. Yeah, you have the ability to taunt the enemy, but then you need to try to survive. Uh, it's built on the Unreal 3 engine, and my god, the graphics in this game are freaking beautiful. Like, this is on par with Ion as far as how good the characters look, but the actual animations and whatnot are even better. Uh, it has a wide range of classes. They are fixed classes, unlike like recent trends in RPGs of let's mix everything. Um, the other thing that has me really excited about this game is it's not a dual faction RPG. Like, I know that was a really cool concept when World of Warcraft came out. The, yeah, we've got two factions and they're opposed to each other, so you got so much PvP, it's great. I'm thoroughly sick of that concept. I, I don't need to be in a questing area and see someone that either I can't talk to because they're on the opposing faction, or that will be actively trying to kill me. I, I don't want that. Well... Uh, the main thing I like about this game is that the classes actually do need to be active, all of them. Like, archers actually have to aim their shots. You can't just click on the enemy and assume that your character will fire for you. Uh, the spellcasting classes need to aim the uh, majority of their abilities. Casters, like the healers in the group, actually have to aim their heals to make sure they're getting to the right targets. That's a big deal. Like... You can't this is just play like Sona, which is show up and let go of your controls. You're, you're not playing this one one-handed, despite what some of the female character models might encourage you to do. <laughs> which we're gonna bring <laughs> That was up. bad, and you should feel bad. We're going to bring it up in a minute. So yeah, this is an absolutely gorgeous MMO that's coming out May 1st. The, they're taking applicants for the open beta coming up in just a couple days. Uh, they've already had announcements about the new dungeons coming up. They've just done a new cinematic trailer. Uh, the gameplay footage from 2011 is still totally valid. Um, the class art in this is absolutely beautiful, and each of the classes definitely has their own, their own appeal. So uh, we'll go over the races really fast. There's the Amun, who are kind of like half-dragons. Um, so there's a picture of the Amun. All right. Both a male and female example. Yeah, the males definitely look beastly. Mm -hmm. the, the women still fit the the odd beauty figure. I guess that's that the way to put it. Exotic is Exotic. probably the Fair thing enough. they're going for. Alright. The Baraka, who are basically a, a race of all male stone giants. Now this kind of reminds me of one of the races from Final Fantasy XI. Really. All right, then. Yep. They're giants. They're cool. Uh, moving on down the list. Doo -doo -doo. The Kastanic, who are the Devilkin race in this game. Oh, I think these are ridiculously cool. I, I totally want to play these. Um, they have a, a trailer for each of the races, if you want to see them. Um, but every every race does have about five racial uh, abilities that range in, like, this is always up to, yeah, this thing is an hour-long cooldown. Uh, let's see, next race. Okay, this is the weird one. And this is the one that when uh, when the my friend who showed me this game showed me this race, I was kind of like, really? 
The Ellen are basically child furs, I guess is the best way to put it. Not really furs. No, they, they just, just have, have cat ears. They just yeah, it's a race of childlike people who have cat ears. Ta-da. Um, yeah. They they do the male and female thing, I think. But yeah, um yeah, that's a thing. I don't know who would play this race. Yeah, it's like a creepier version of uh, World of Warcraft's gnomes. <laughs> right, right. Moving on. I don't want to talk about those. Alright, the High Elves, because we can't name everything creatively. They're, they're High Elves. They're Elves and they're pompous. They're blonde, for the most part. With the pointy ears. Like, I, I gotta say, in a game where most of the races were really unique and interesting, you had to just do High Elves. Yeah. Humans, because... Why not? Ta-da. They're humans. The Papori. These are awesome. Badger people! Looks like a raccoon to me. Yep. Badgers, raccoons, like, there's tons of different examples. Actually, I take it back. The Ellens are an all-female race. So, the little child things with ears. Only girls. That's kind of creepy. So, they're all small girls with ears. Yep, as opposed to, <laughs> as opposed to the race of giant stone men. But yes, there's an entire race of, like, badger raccoon people. And finally, we have the... Oh, nope. No, finally. That was it. Ta-da. Uh, classes that are available in this game coming up. The Archer, Berserker, Lancer, Mystic, Priest, Sorcerer, Slayer, and Warrior. The Warrior is the only class that received a 5 out of 5 challenge rating in this game. Because, unlike most tanks where your role is... I will stand here and spam taunt and then my defensive abilities. Yeah, no, the warrior actually has to dodge. You, you have to get out of the way of the blows that are trying to kill you. The lancer is closer to the tank that can stand there and get punched in the face because he's wielding a giant shield. But like I said, this is an active combat game where each of these classes actually has to participate and aim their abilities in order to make them work. Uh, otherwise, this is pretty much your standard MMO fare, you know, collect loot, gain experience, get bigger experience, get bigger loot, and then go do the endgame content. That's the thing. There are lots of story-driven dungeons already planned and many already in the game. Uh, we've already seen examples of three of those that you can just check out on the website. Um, the launch schedule is coming up. They're going to be doing the open beta test from the 19th until the 23rd. You can go ahead and just register for it. The Head Start is beginning April 28th for people who have pre-ordered the game. For kindergartners. For, for early education. Yep, that's the Head Start right there. Um, and the actual main launch date is going to be May 1st for anyone interested in playing. Cool. So, I am not interested in MMOs at all, but that exists. Right. If you pre-ordered, he's super interested in. If you pre-ordered, you can actually get a chance to reserve your character name, so that you don't end up being on the same server and running into Sen. <laughs> Basically, not having to make it another version of that name, just with a, a weird character. Mm -hmm. Speaking of games that I'm not really interested in playing, <laughs> Skullgirls is a downloadable fifteen dollar fighting game on PSN and XBLA. And, and while I'm not going, some interest in that. So. I, I really had some interest in it until I heard two things. One, being an independently developed game for only fifteen dollars, there is a really limited cast of characters, which I know sounds really like nitpicky because, like, one of the best fighting games of all time, uh, Street Fighter Two, only had. 10 characters, I believe. I find it hard to call a small cast of characters a detriment for a fighting game, because that just means it's finely balanced. Right. The problem with that balancing is, the game developers didn't see fit to include a move list for the characters. 
that is that is something that has been a problem. They have actually a fairly extensive in-game tutorial system, but no yes. just move list, which is crazy because tutorials are way harder to make than move lists. Right, and in an interview he said the reasoning behind this was because the best fighting games are the ones that you can discover new things in years down the road. He cited Marvel vs. Capcom 2 about this. But if I remember correctly, when Marvel vs. Capcom 2 was released for the home consoles, it had a freaking move list. The other thing is that there is a move list for Skullgirls available, you just have to go to a website to get it instead of having it in your start menu. Right, and in order to have this available, people probably had to hack the game code to find it. I think it's actually official. I think in, in the tutorial menu in the game, it'll say, for a move list, go to this URL. Okay. Well, so you've just... All you've done is add an extra step for people to have to discover how your game's characters work. That's not quality gameplay. That That's just, hey, go to our site. Uh, well, well, that's not great. The animations in this game, holy crap, they are wacko crazy. Yeah, the, the, the concept of each character is unique and... Like, Psychotic, you have Miss Fortune, the cat girl, who does literally blow up her own body for some of her moves. Like, she's a cat girl. She can rip off her own head and use it as a weapon. Like, what? this character can pull off her head, throw it at the enemy, and then have some control over the head itself to attack the enemy. Like, it just rolls around and bites your ankles, yeah, or what? Yeah, Exactly. The head will, like, roll around on the ground and jump up and pop up and bite the opponent. One of the characters has I two giant that. muscular fist arms sticking out of her ears. Yep. And, and she spins around her giant muscular ear fist arms to attack you. Yeah, the, the sanest character in this game is the naughty nurse. Who, like, doesn't follow any any weirder guard. She'd just be what you'd expect this character to be. That's the tamest one. Like, there's a character who is a psychotic, like, 1920s cartoon character. Like, she's black and white. Her name is uh, Poppycock, I think. Yeah, she's insane. She follows the rules of cartoon logic. She can drop anvils on people. Her hat can produce a gun. There is a character that is a hideous writhing mound of flesh with no humanoid form that sometimes shapeshifts into humanoid form, but mostly it's a horrible writhing mound of flesh. Yep, that's a thing. So yeah, we've got, I pulled up a, a list of the characters like, Philia is pretty normal. I mean, Philia just fights with her hair. That's what she does. Um, yep. Sarabella, the girl with the fists coming out of her head. Yeah, she pummels people with those. It's not her ears. It's like... That's a hat. On a hat, yeah. Peacock, that was the character's name. Yeah, Peacock, the character who follows, like, cartoon logic. And, like, you'd think there'd be some cute descriptions behind these characters. No, they're all, like, horrible biological weapons. They are all awful, awful histories for who these people are. Um, the plot goes basically along the line of, this is Soul Calibur, they're seeking Soul Edge, and Soul Edge makes you horrible and evil. Except it's a skull instead of a sword this time. Uh, Parasol, the fighter who wields an umbrella and a gun. She's kind of like a spy type character. Um, Miss Fortune, the cat girl, who... All of those lines on her body are separation points for her limbs being able to fly off. Pain Wheel. I don't even know how to describe Pain Wheel as a character. Like a lady pyramid head almost, only with a giant shuriken on her back. At attached to her spine. So, while I do not intend to play this, I think it is well worth watching a few minutes of footage of these animations on YouTube, because they're crazy animations. It's good 2D stuff, like, if... if I feel like if 2D had been the major way of games for a long time instead of 3D taking over, this would be what 2D games would look like in the modern age with current technology. Right. Crazy 2D. 
Well, the, the game itself was designed by professional fighting game players to be balanced and competitive. So, there's actually a mechanic built into the game to stop infinite combos. It is something any character can do, where after you've been hit so many times, you gain access to this trigger that will end the opponent's combo. That, well, kind of a great idea. That also sounds like a crazy cop-out, because that's like, okay, now we don't have to QA all of our movesets, because there's just a combo breaker. Perfect. I, I think that's a fine idea, to be honest. I, I, I guess it's a good idea, but it's like, wow, this really is cutting the Gordian knot. The way, the way fighting game companies have done up until now is that we have to assess every possible combination of moves against every possible combination of characters well, and make sure that none of them infinite combo. It, it's because the game is built around a tag battle system where you can pick between one, two, or three characters to be in your team. And I think Q&A testing all of the available combos that could be launched at a character honestly would have delayed the game by a full year, if not more. So the ability to just shut down infinite chain combos with an in-game mechanic definitely seems to be a positive thing. That's a good idea. It's just sort of the obvious answer that I'm surprised that the big companies haven't used before. They're like, oh, this saves us a lot of work. Actually, this mechanic was available in the Guilty Gear series, but you can only do it once per fight. Right. Which means your opponent could immediately launch into the same combo and completely screw you. Oh, hey, that's a game. That's a game. So yeah, um, unless we have anything else, this has been Nerd Talk for Wednesday, April 18th, 2012. Uh, I'm Pixie. I'm Sen. And I'm Pyrosim. And we'll catch you next week on Nerd Talk.